Thomas, the son of Gilbert and Matilda Beckett, was born in 1119 or 1120, the youngest of, we think, five children, with four older sisters. The Becketts were originally from Normandy, but they settled in London where Gilbert was a merchant. The family lived on Cheapside, an area of London fashionable with wealthy merchants. Cheapside is still a busy street in the City of London today. Thomas was born on St Thomas the Apostle's Day, 21st of December, and was named after the saint. His mother was devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she passed on this devotion to her son. When Thomas was about ten years old, his parents sent him to school at the Priory of St Mary in Merton, about ten miles down the old Roman road of Stane Street. Merton's canons had a reputation for holiness and learning, and of course the Priory was dedicated to Mary, but why Gilbert and Matilda sent Thomas there specifically we can't be sure. It's hard to believe now, but then Merton Priory was in lovely Surrey countryside, surrounded by the water meadows of the River Wandle. In the 1130s, when he was there, the church and cloister were still temporary wooden structures, in the process of being replaced by stone buildings. Hardly anything is known about the couple of years Thomas spent at Merton, but we know the sort of things he would have learned. Boys in monastic schools had to memorise the Ten Commandments and parts of the Bible. They were taught to read and they learned basic Latin grammar with the aid of a textbook written by the 4th century Roman Donatus. Boys were also taught to sing, because church services were all sung. The main reference to Thomas's school days at Merton comes from a biography by his friend William Fitzstephen. William wrote, So this we know. His father was moved by divine revelation. At some point the father had commended the upbringing of the boy to Prior Robert of the religious house of canons of Merton. One day the father came to see his boy. The boy was ushered in before his father and the prior, and the father knelt down in veneration. Indignant, the prior said to him, Are you mad, old man? What are you doing? Why do you bow down to your son? You honour him, but he should honour you. The father said secretly to him, Lord, I know what I do. He will be great in the face of the Lord. Thomas left Merton after a couple of years. In 1133 a fire started at Gilbert's house. Since it destroyed some of the priory of Holy Trinity Aldgate, it must have been quite a fire, and Gilbert must have lost much of his stock as well as the family possessions. It's possible that Gilbert could no longer afford to send Thomas to boarding school at Merton, and instead sent him to a London grammar school closer to home. Thomas became a cleric, and as a young man found employment in the household of Theobald of Beck, Archbishop of Canterbury. In 1154, Theobald made Thomas Archdeacon of Canterbury. Thomas soon became best friends with the new king, Henry II. They used to go hunting together, and so the following year he was made Chancellor, or the king's chief minister. As Chancellor, Thomas didn't forget Merton Priory. He brought King Henry to Merton, and the two men gave funds for the Priory Church, Thomas also paying for some crosses. William Fitzstephen said that Thomas liked to pass the last three days of Holy Week with the Merton community. After the night service of Tenebrae, on Good Friday until three in the afternoon, he would visit, for the sake of prayer, the poor churches of the neighbouring villages on foot, disguised in a cloak, accompanied with a single companion to show the way. In 1161, Theobald, Archbishop of Canterbury, died. Henry chose Thomas as his replacement. After all, Thomas was Archdeacon of Canterbury and Chancellor of England, and moreover Henry's best friend. As Archbishop, Thomas took as his chaplain and confessor Robert, a canon of Merton. Thomas also dressed in the habit of a Merton canon although he never actually became one. The appointment of Thomas turned out to be, for Henry, a disaster. Thomas changed from a fun-loving, flamboyant companion-in-arms 
to a serious, sober churchman, and he soon fell out with Henry over matters of church and state. Things came to a head in 1164, and Thomas spent the rest of the decade in exile. With persuasion from the Pope, Thomas returned to England in 1170, but he fell out again with Henry almost immediately. Henry, who was in France at the time, let out his anger, crying, What miserable drones and traitors have I nourished and brought up in my household, who let their lord be treated with such shameful contempt by a low-born cleric? Four knights took him at his word, decided to prove that they weren't miserable drones and traitors, and crossed the English Channel intending to arrest Thomas in Canterbury. The four knights arrived in the cathedral, but Thomas would not give in to them. Witnessed by Robert of Merton and the priest Edward Grimm, the four knights struck Thomas down in front of the altar, slicing off the top of his head and spattering his brains over the floor. After Thomas's death, Robert of Merton showed Thomas's followers that under his canon's robes and the monk's habit, he wore a hair shirt, a symbol of religious piety. News of Thomas's murder in the cathedral spread like wildfire throughout Europe, and very soon pilgrims began coming to his shrine in Canterbury, and within just two years he had been made a saint. One of Thomas's followers, the scholar and diplomat John of Salisbury, worked at Merton Priory with another of its canons, Guy, to produce a collection of letters about Thomas, and these remain a major source about Thomas for historians today. In memory of Thomas Becket, the next but one Archbishop of Canterbury, Hubert Walter, also adopted the habit of a Merton canon, and Merton Priory remained closely associated both with the Archbishops of Canterbury and with the Kings of England for the next 300 years. <laughs>